Vinland Saga Season 2, Episode 23, so Two Paths. Perfect title for what's been going on. How is this going to get resolved? What can Thorfinn possibly do at this point? I love the respect they have for Thorfinn now. This again, this keeps making an appearance. Might makes right. This is also beautifully done, man. This whole this whole thing. Damn, this image. Well, because Thorfinn asked him a question that Knut's also asking himself. He would like to dismiss it, but he can't. This old chestnut, this old villain chestnut. Man, this is this is already so so amazing, so packed with meaning. The source material obviously is amazing, but as the author himself seems to frequently point out in his Twitter threads, they just did such a great job bringing this to life. Like every shot is a work of art in itself. Thorfinn's not just a threat because he's gonna lead the sheep off a cliff. Thorfinn's a threat because he's gonna lead the shepherd off the cliff. Do you know the feeling of getting away with something? Maybe you don't fully even realize what you're doing wrong or, or the lies you're telling to yourself, and maybe you can get away with it with certain people. Maybe you can get away with it with almost everyone. There comes a point inevitably where you meet somebody who sees right through you. And it's like seeing yourself for the first time. All the ugliness that you've been hiding, that's been there the whole time, and it's there. It just hasn't amassed enough power in your psyche to make itself at the forefront. Suddenly that's front and center. And you can imagine that the reaction to meeting someone like that would be hate. And maybe that often is the reaction. But for me, putting myself in the situation, I couldn't even hate the accuser because of all the, the deep shame that it evokes. If there's anything else in there, weirdly, there might be a little bit of relief. It's like, finally, the game is up. This thing I know is allowed to breathe. Maybe it's me, you know, maybe part of me has been imprisoned by other parts of me that are not in my control. Knut is brilliant. He's just way ahead of almost everyone in the world across so many categories. Thorfinn is maybe the only person that exists exists on his plane. So while Canute's psyche via his dead father is talking about derailing the sheep or what I'm taking to mean the plan overall, it feels more to me like an existential crisis for Canute himself. Also going with the sheep and shepherd analogy, it's interesting that Thorfinn has been repeatedly depicted as a wolf. <laughs> I mean, the humility is just unreal. It's so crazy to me that human beings possess something like psychic ability. Thorfinn saying there's nothing he can do through force, or he's not willing to do anything through force, so there's nothing he can do. But but he's already done so much just by literally entering the same space physically as Canute because they instantly know each other, they instantly see each other, they're on the same wavelength, and just Thorfinn's questions get mirrored by Canute's psyche and the, the very things he's already kind of harboring to the point where it's like a mind virus that just was transmitted through like sound vibrations. And the same for me, and I imagine a lot of people watching this, you just immediately tap into their wavelength because you've been through basically their lives with both of them. And because I think the ideas put forth by the show are so potent, so engrossing because they're capturing something real. Please, Thorfinn, talk me into or out of this. Ooh. Damn. Hit him with the, I'm not mad, I'm just disappointed. <laughs> I guess Thorfinn just broke him, just broke him with a few questions. I mean, yeah, it's Thorfinn. No, that's not it. To me, this feels partly like relief. He was on the brink for a second there. <laughs> These images of Thorfinn are something else. <laughs> Yeah. Canute arriving at the place we've been for a while now. 
逃げられるだけ逃げてやるさお前の作る世界では生きていけない人たちのためにお前と俺自身のためにも I think at certain points watching this season, if I had known the solution was running away, I might have said something to the effect of, well, yeah, that's really all you can do because might is right. And I think as I have said, yeah, your ideals are great, but what do you do when you're, you're forced with direct conflict? Recently, though, as you might imagine, I've been thinking a lot about the show and I've been thinking specifically about the might is right thing because there's something that really was nagging at me about that. What's really interesting about this previous scene is it speaks to something of a, a I wouldn't say a total change of heart, but a little addendum I'd like to add to that, which is that there might be something higher than might is right. I mean, there's some truth to it in the sense that in any one direct conflict, the final level of escalation is force. And the other party has a decision to make about the very real possibility of engaging that force as well or die. But I now think there's a little bit more to the story if you're willing to zoom out a little bit, because maybe the one thing greater than might, for lack of a better word, let's call it truth. Because as I've tried to argue, I do believe that there's, there's an objective truth. And I think that that truth points to something like goodness in the way we all kind of collectively understand it, even if we don't have an exact pinpoint specific guideline for, for what that is. But I suspect that if people actually can achieve not a superficial understanding, not following goodness out of fear of reprisal or because of law or anything like that, but it, just a real solid living philosophical knowledge of what good is like Thorfinn has, then the might is right question sort of becomes irrelevant because then you just have something like a world of Thorfinns or two Thorfinns or whatever. The reason I think this speaks to that is Thorfinn doesn't have an answer, right? He doesn't have an answer to Canute invading. Like, okay, you run, you run now. What happens when Canute catches up? Well, the answer is time. I don't know exactly how you do this and there are definitely counter challenges to it, but you do your best to create an environment that encourages and promotes truth of expression, sanctity of human life, a priority on safety, growth, development, all those things. And this might be an optimistic take, but I think that actually is the natural progression of things in the course of human history. And you might even argue you the way things have to go because I think as human beings we all desire safety prosperity the continuation of our lineage etc and the closer we get to truth and understanding the big picture and thinking abstractly the better our chances for survival and so those two those two pursuits go hand in hand and it just will take a very very long time to uncover that fully there are counter forces of course like Thorfinn's wisdom on this topic comes from hardship Right. And I think one of the dangers of prosperity is not understanding the depths of darkness that are possible. And yeah, a lot of the relative safety and prosperity that has come has come not from people who have a deep understanding like Thorfinn does, but from one or two individuals or a small group of individuals understanding it and then kind of like enforcing it and the majority of people just adopting laws or adopting the structure of society. So just so that they can live. Nevertheless, right. Those people, those few people, the Thorfinns of the world stood on people like them that carved the path before them. And again, optimistic take. You hope that over time, those standing blocks get higher and higher and more resilient, more sound. And so I think I'm much more in line, in tune with what Thorfinn's saying in his I'll run away than, than I might have been even just a couple weeks ago. Interesting that his concern is directed there for Canute. Canute just feels like a child right now, despite being this great emperor. Jesus. <laughs> but also Thor's. Thorfinn's anything but average. Wait, did they just leave? No, they didn't leave. They- Whoa, they just left! F Loki. <laughs> Loki man is always a little too too big for his britches. Always getting ahead of himself. Really got through. That that's so amazing and so interesting that that's the way he interprets it. He's got some goodness left. Thorfinn won, so did Canute, I guess. Yeah, like I said, I mean, there's a little bit of a relief in it, right? He met a, a higher force than himself, finally. It's pretty stunning. Whoa, that's amazing. It's a testament to Thorfinn, obviously, but it's also a testament to Canute. That was in there, right? He was struggling with it. It really almost does feel like in those situations, there, there's a, 
truer part of yourself, if that makes sense, it's locked in by other parts of yourself. And a lot of times those other parts are logistical things or worldly issues, environmental factors, things that you've adopted that aren't yours. Like, I mean, Canute adopted this from the crown, which represents so many things simultaneously, but it's dangerous. And this is something dangerous for intelligent people as a whole, that the value system inside of Canute up to this point was very well set up, justified by its own schema of thinking and more intelligent, more complex than just about anybody else could grapple with just because he's so high level of a person. Relating to this as best I can, I've been convinced of all sorts of ridiculous things in the course of my lifetime. People who I would later come to agree with on these issues, who would push back on my deeply rooted beliefs, I was able to quickly dismiss in my mind because they weren't playing the game using the model that I valued and I considered to be the correct model for approaching things. Often what it took or what it takes for me to change my mind about something is someone engaging me in the manner in which I like to be engaged and beat me at it because then I just have no way of overlooking it. If someone takes what I'm saying and just strips it apart logically, I'm at their mercy. And I would imagine that's true of a lot of different ways of reasoning, a lot of different ways of approaching thought and issues. And it's also just generally a good thing to keep in mind about who you're talking to, right? Because to really get to someone, you have to get at their structure, not just being correct. Similar to the idea of love languages, but just much more broad. What it feels like to me there is that Canute met his match or more than his match. It's like detergent on oil, just perfect counter, perfectly chemically composed to dissolve the things that were leading and allowing the thing that had been there the whole time. You know, Canute actually has a lot of goodness to come to the forefront and dominate. And we're only halfway through the episode. Oh, he's earned it. It's been a really long day, a couple of days. I wonder where they all go from here. We gotta find Vinland, right? Or some kind of paradise. Where's Einar? Where does Einar go from here? Thorfinn shoulder pat. <laughs> that was a pretty crazy circumstance. Einer, he's still, I don't know. It seems like Einer's struggling with his purpose a little bit. I felt right. I feel unified in that one. They just occupied the same same place in the universe for a second, exact same spot. <laughs> I believe him. I mean, at the very least, he'll be the start of it. That's a huge relief. I was a little bit worried that the two paths would mean they were going to go their separate ways. Man, this is the the broest handshake of all bro handshakes after all they've been through together. Speaking of telepathy, and now their work begins after all this. The Leaf's mission is successful. <laughs> Snake could still use a purpose. I guess the farm could be his. Oh, he made it. That's that's great. I forgot his life was in question. Omar is the, the character I didn't expect, but I loved it. They get the chance to say goodbye. <laughs> Such a sprinkle answer. Get out of here and get to work. Wait, we got gold? Alright. I didn't take any. I'm like half expecting Snake to jump in and swim after them. Speaking of your real stuff coming out, can you imagine, like, who would have thought when they came to this farm as slaves? Ah oh, man, it's hard. It's hard to look at Kettle now, but it'll be hardest for him. His punishment is living with what he's done, and also living with his wife. Survivors stuck around. This is how it started. 
It's totally different now. It means so much more. It's also somewhat redemptive for Sverkel, right? He talked about waiting for the storm to pass, but man, he was very involved in this whole thing. He really spoke his mind, always made the difficult decisions that felt right to him. So he ends this with that knowledge of his character and also his farm and his family, watching his grandson turn into a man, etc. <laughs> Wow. What can I... S s s it's a lot to take in. That's one of the most powerful episodes I've ever watched of anything, I think. That phrase, somewhere not here, is interesting. Because we know, right? We we know that they're not headed to perfect paradise. It doesn't exist on Earth. It can't exist. Not in any foreseeable future, at least. But that's sort of not... The point, I mean, I think the point is what they're doing despite that fact. There's so many things to give into, there's so many evils to give into, so many temptations, so many dangers, but Thorfinn is kind of the embodiment of, of hope. What many would even consider to be a, a naive or futile hope, but it's that very thing, it's that very hope that will lead him into this, this series of actions that won't solve every problem, but will be the only thing that actually can create one step towards making things better. Inside of it is so many things. It's real wisdom, it's truth, it's self-understanding and mastery. Some we're not here it's not just about the, the location it's not just about leaving the land it's about an ideal i mean vinland saga has always been a representation of an ideal it's hard to explain how i feel about this episode and this season as a whole it's interesting how connected it feels to me with attack on titan i mean i know the authors know each other and are inspirations for each other i'm sort of glad the timing worked out the way it did these are big issues that have come up to say i feel vindicated is not not accurate because it's so much bigger than i had thought there's so much more to it than i thought i just feel really inspired by it like i was saying about canute you know i am canute too like thorfinn and the show as a whole it acts sort of as a, a challenge because a lot of this feels feels right to me there's that difficult side to ideals Right? It's like if you see an ideal, if someone can reason with you in a way that touches you, you can't help but engage with it, almost. Your excuses, the things that you have built up, the protective layers, they kind of melt away under the face of like the glaring truth. I think there's a mistake that the show could have made but didn't. And the fact that it didn't is amazing in itself. And that's being overly sentimental, let's say, or overly rose-colored about the the world. There's a way to write Thorfinn winning that's unsatisfying, because we're like, yeah, but, you know? But I think the author really nailed it, because it didn't ignore any fundamental realities. Knut's decision to just leave and change his approach feels right to me. But just for argument's sake, to take a totally different scenario and say that Knut just continued on his rampage, it's still, in a sense, just a more delayed victory than the victory Thorfinn experienced in the course of the show. Because I think even he recognizes that he is not going to be the one to just force save the world. That's something that is going to take a lot of time. It's somewhere not here. It's a world that has to be built. But whatever happened, whatever would have happened, he was an input in that in the best possible way he could have been at the most realized state he could have been. It would have had an influence one way or the other. And over time, I think that wins. How much time I think is a function of how many Thorfins there are and how many people Thorfinn comes in contact with, how many people are hit with what Thorfinn is. You might say in, in some strange way, the show itself is a Thorfinn. The show is not solving any of the world problems. The show is not making <laughs> fewer people root for certain characters in Attack on Titan, although maybe it is, you know, I quite possibly it is. But it's something that I think people who watch and understand can't unsee. Then I think it's a matter of remembering and practicing as best as possible. And I think it can be extended to more than just nonviolence. I think it can be extended to conviction in one's principles, not doing things that feel wrong because that's the way of the world or you got to play to win or whatever. Like a lot of what I'm feeling right now, it's hard to put into words, but there was something really trans Transcended about the moment with Thorfinn and Einar standing on that cliff looking at the birds. Like they, it was a godlike experience in terms of the just the level of clarity. The fact that they, they reached the highest plane of something simultaneously in exactly the same way at exactly the same moment. They tapped into something that's bigger than them, you know, bigger than either of their, their flesh and blood bodies. Something that exists that is just there in a very pure form. It's funny that I think at some point in the show I was talking about Thorfinn's journey being measuring up to his father. I think it's apparent that not only did he match up to Thor's but surpassed him in ways that are that are uniquely him. That actually might be evidence to the point I was I was just referring to, where your purest form, you do your best in the situation, and even if things go wrong, they ripple. The goodness ripples. So Thor's actually did appeal to nonviolence and and died, but the result is Thorfinn. Thor's was an essential link in that chain. You know, you know he would be proud. A big question for me that comes out of this is like, how do you get people here? How do you get to this state without having to go through what Thorfinn went through, without having to go through what Thor's went through? I think that. 
that might be one of the the secrets that might be the last key to unlock something better than the system of might is right or goodness by default or goodness by indoctrination goodness by fear of reprisal and actual goodness if you can get people there without the the trauma without the hardship to understand it at the same level and have that exist on some kind of systemic level that's the thorfinn ideal